on the radio. A little high energy lo fi for you. Come to Hamilton, you do what you want. It's rock and roll, you know? Kiss tribute bands, we got yeah. Flamingo, Absinthe, Corktown, Casbah, we got Homegrown, we got tons. We got This Ain't Hollywood, a classic, awesome spot, you know? That's right, you know? It's great here, man. It's great, great, great. Come on. You know what I mean? I'm a lady in the streets, but a freak in the bed. I don't know. I love you, Rick Taylor. I love you people in Hamilton. You're the best. I love everybody. Here, uh, that's, that's enough of this jibber-jabber. Rick Taylor, Lullabies in Razorland. Every Friday afternoon, 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. Lullabies in Razorland with Rick Taylor, 93.3 CFMU. Show me some skin. On 93.3 CFMU, redefining radio in your community. Doing a big CD release party at This St. Hollywood on Thursday. Newest Hamiltonian that I've gotten to meet. Here's Piper Hayes. Little song called Honey. From Goodbye, Mr. Nice Guy. It's a concept album. This is 93.3 CFMU. Well, your lips were smooth, your hands. So pure it bruised, it bruised. So pure it bruised. Dr. Disc. And when we talk, we talk at night. And you said your feelings, they gave you fright. So instead you chose Mr. Right. And I sang, honey, 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 why? Why, why did you leave me so sad? You had one foot in the middle and two feet out the door, leaving me feeling so unsure.
the latest addition to Hamilton is actually uh, someone who was born in New York City, Staten Island specifically. She was raised in Toronto since the age of two, but since 2015 is calling Hamilton home. Immersed in arts and entertainment, her father grew up in Greenwich Village, uh, and uh, he's still a photographer in film, while her grandmother was an actress and worked in radio. Hayes has ties with New York City, and we hope to learn more about that. I'm interested, in, if not intrigued, about her work with Second City, but I, I guess the most important thing as we go to the phones is uh, Piper Hayes is releasing a new EP this week in Hamilton, her new adopted home. Uh, I uh, am quite uh, interested in learning about the journey of your life so far. Um, you were born in New York, Toronto, I guess the family, you'll have to explain, but uh, eventually I want to know why you came to Hamilton. So you grew up in Toronto. Yes, that's right. What I was grew up in the East End of Toronto in the beaches, and uh, my par parents are currently still there. My um, my dad is a New Yorker. He grew up in Greenwich Village, actually. And my parents met in Greece, and when they were both traveling in the seventies, and then when they decided to start their lives together in a family, they essentially um, my mom moved to New York, and she continued studying for a while. And my dad was working; um, he just was starting his career in film and. And then, because I have two older sisters, and they, my mom is an early childhood educator and really wanted to make sure that we got a good education as well as a community upbringing, they decided Toronto was the place to do that. And at the time, the movie industry was booming, so it was really good for my dad's career as well. And, um, and then, yeah, a year ago, I moved to Hamilton, and it's been, it's been really lovely. I... I really was ready to get out of Toronto and, and try a smaller city and get um, have a little bit of a different lifestyle, not so much working to live, but rather able, like in a city like Hamilton where I pay less in rent, I'm able to actually devote a lot more time to my music and my career and my business, and, and it's been really a wonderful move. Well, what was... You could have moved to uh, Peterborough or Guelph or something. Was there anything specific about Hamilton that made that brought you here? Well, yeah, my partner Carson Ritzithorp. He grew up on a farm in Millgrove, and the way I actually met him was through an organic grocery store in Toronto called For Life, and his dad supplies to that store. And my sister was working at the store at the time, and I. And they do a farm bash in October, and I went up and I played some music, and I met him, and I, I loved his voice, and he's an amazing guitar player. And we connected on that, and we started rehearsing along with another friend of ours who's an upright bass player, Harry White, who's in Hamilton. And, and it just kind of went from there, and there was this natural transition from needing to get out of Toronto, and being closer to him and then also being in a city that so far I really feel really welcomed into and it's been a really, really wonderful past year and the people in the music industry as well have I've really met some incredible people that are inspiring to me and it's been really cool. What part of Hamilton do you live in without giving out your address on the radio? Yeah. <laughs> Right now, I, I live in the East End. I actually, when I first moved here, I was in more of the West End. Right now, I'm I live in the East End, and uh, I really I really enjoy it. It's it's not too loud, and it's lots of trees. And you, I mean, the amazing thing about Hamilton is that the escarpment is everywhere, and it's just this incredible landscape with waterfalls and you can go for a 10 minute bike ride and be at a waterfall I want to uh, yeah. I, I want to talk about your music but since you've already skipped ahead in my interview notes uh, you mentioned partner Carson Ritzy Thorpe uh, you have that band with him uh, Hazeland but you've also started uh, or currently run a musical therapy based program in Hamilton as well that's right yeah is that like I, a day job kind of thing or an altruistic kind of thing? Um, I guess for me, it's 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 
Neither. I mean, I think it's, it, it, yes, it does provide some income for me, which is fabulous, but it also provides a community of, of people. And the woman who started Hamilton Adult Community Support is just an incredible human. And she, she fostered this community of adults that um, with either intellectual or physical disabilities, and it's a program that helps transition people um, into like a day program that's not school anymore. And I go in and, and we play music, and it's uh, it's it's absolutely wonderful. It's definitely something that I want to do more of, and I I think it very much uh, for me is of the same importance as performing on stage and and sharing the music that way. I think it's it's a really close part of of my music and, and close to my heart. And I really love being able to share music with people and communities that have been separated from a lot of our lives and, and have a lot to offer, and it's amazing, so, well, yeah. The the inspiration or reason for making music is where I hope to go, but we are talking with Piper Hayes performing, uh, celebrating her new collection of songs Thursday, October 13 at This Ain't Hollywood. Uh, we'll learn more about that specific show. Uh, but the new album, or the new collection of songs, an EP entitled Goodbye Mr. Nice Guy is what's being celebrated Technically, it's your second studio release. It's your third release overall. Live in New York was 2013. Ain't Nothing Like was 2014. Uh, the first song, well, it's called a concept album. So explain the concept for us, Piper. Sure. Uh, yeah, so these songs, there's three songs. And when I played them on stage, I always like to start off by saying that I play these songs in the order in which I wrote them and in which they happened in my life. They're, they definitely tell the story of a breakup, um, but I don't think it's just limited to that story. For me, these songs came from being in love to the breakup itself and then to months later realizing I'm better off and, it's, and I've, I've moved on and I have answers to the questions that I didn't think I had those answers to, and um, and and it was just a time. It came from a time in my life when I was breaking up with aspects of myself, and um, you know, learning to say no to things, and and learning to value my work and value myself and my needs, and so it was very much a culmination of of life experiences, and. Um, and as, as as love factors into that, it uh, as a result, it's it's something that's very dear to my heart. I learned a lot about myself during that period of time, and and these songs came from that. So I think that's why people relate to them. And I've had people come up to me after shows and just you know tell me their story. And there's nothing more gratifying as, as a songwriter than somebody hearing the lyrics and, and relating to it. Well, yes. So, uh, again, we go through the path. Your journey in that experience, these three songs, as you mentioned, are different topics. The opening song, Loving You, would be that uh, documentation of love blossoming. It also ends dramatically with a line it's the reason why I sing mm -hmm. so love is I, in my mind I was getting a little bit lost because I was uh, thinking of Paul McCartney's silly love song some people think the world uh, you can't build the world on silly love songs what's wrong with that hey. um, so the reason why you sing is love yeah absolutely I I've had a tumultuous journey myself in life, and I've gone through a lot of, I went through a lot of my early sort of teens into early adulthood really hating myself, and in hearing some of those feelings and thoughts around self, I 
I came to love myself and and in doing so I'm able to love others and and love aspects of life. I think life is a challenge and there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now and, and has been going on in the world that's really scary and awful and horrifying. So I really do think love has that power to heal and when we love them we see all of all of them and I think it's a very powerful tool for change. Well, right. I mean, it's that perhaps, well, Greenwich Village we mentioned earlier and your Piper, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you had hippie parents. Um, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> it, 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 it's all about love then. Yes. Love is all you need. Yeah. <laughs> I can just quote thousands. In a way, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah... To a certain extent, though, it's maybe more modern than your take on love, since the EP is entitled Goodbye, Mr. Nice Guy. You're bringing up uh, growing up and, well, I mean, you're being very um, honest and uh, bearing your soul, so to speak. I think a lot of people don't like themselves, so uh, growing up, you you were, how old are you and how did you help love your, learn to love yourself? Um... I'm I'm actually turning thirty in November. Wow! So I'm yeah. You don't look that. No, no, I've heard that before, and which is which is great. <laughs> hopefully that'll, you know, hopefully I've got some good genes and and feel young for a while still. Um, so how how did you learn to love yourself, Piper Hayes? Well, I when I was about thirteen, I. I developed an eating disorder and, and dealt with that for about 10 years. Finally got to a point in that process, in that journey, where I realized I needed to get help and and that I needed to stop everything and, and start really focusing on me. And in that process and therapy and and work and introspection, I... I started to trust my instincts and I followed the feelings in my own body as opposed to judging based on what I thought others wanted or needed. And as a result, new people came into my life and liked me for who I was and I liked myself because I was being integrous to to those those things, and I mean, of course, there was definitely a process of um, the classic "fake it till you make it" mm, cliche, but there's something very valuable in that. And I think, I think it's really easy to be depressed and in, in, in this world and and feel sad and feel low about maybe not not feeling like you have any power. And um, one thing that was always really powerful tool for me was imagining something different and imagining what that would feel like and and then walking around with that and, and then living living it out and I think that was for me a way that that I could transition from that imaginary world to an actual physical feeling in this world and but once but I had to see it first I had to be able to have that picture that imagination Talking with Piper Hayes, the new album, Goodbye, Mr. Nice Guy, being celebrated this ain't Hollywood Thursday, October 13th. Uh, the single is Honey, and I, well, we can get, well, again, the, the trilogy of songs, so to speak, is the, uh, the love, finding new love, the finding of the breakup, rather quickly, it seems, from one to two, um, and then three is the aftermath. And that's where Honey comes in, uh, reminiscing about the love that happened, but uh, the person you're singing to had feelings that gave them fright, so they ended up choosing Mr. Right. That line kind of confuses me. So how would, you, how would you explain the song, Honey? Well, the, the concept of Mr. Nice Guy is is probably maybe part of the confusion um, and Mr. Wright. So I, one of the things I did after 
I went through this breakup was I went to see a psychic counselor and it wasn't so much because I wanted my future to be told but it was more I needed some hope and um, one of the things this this gentleman had said to me was um, your ex is somebody who who makes up his own reality and is so convinced that it's real that he's able to convince others it's also real. And in doing that, he's an essentially Mr. Right. And, um, and so for me, up until this point in my life, I think I very much learned that it was my job to make others feel comfortable and even even though sometimes my my skill in certain jobs threatened others that I worked with. And so the goodbye to Mr. Nice Guy really is essentially saying, I get to decide if you're nice, and or others get to decide if you're nice. I think a lot of people in this world parade as as nice or generous, but they're often are expectations that come along with those nice behaviors or those generosities. And this goes for anybody in the world. And so this this goodbye, Mr. Nice Guy, is, is just the concept of I'm going to value myself and 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 let let others decide how how like if if you're nice or not because I think genuine interact, genuine in, authentic interaction takes into account um, someone's true nature, and then and and what they feel about themselves, not just what they feel they are. Well, we're all struggling to somehow make it through. Absolutely, absolutely, and and yeah, this this album I think really for me was a way to take my power back because I went through. And I think when we go through breakup, it can be really confusing. It can, it can be really upsetting, and there's so so much that comes up in a breakup that maybe is limited to that breakup itself, and then maybe also other aspects of our life become challenged because we start to think about ourselves in a different way and our lives in a different way. Piper Hayes, one of the latest additions to the Hamilton area, singer, songwriter, new EP out. Goodbye, Mr. Nice Guy, October 13 at This Ain't Hollywood. Uh, musically, you're writing about love, and Paul McCartney's the king of silly pop songs, silly love songs, <laughs> um, and there doesn't necessarily have to be anything wrong with that. Um, people have m mentioned perhaps you're folk-based or... Or otherwise, um, is it bad to be making pop songs? And is that what Piper Hayes is doing? I I think there's a balance. I my songs for me very much come from authentic places in my life at certain moments in my life. These songs were written two years ago, so they reflect two years ago in my life. There are, there are lots of new songs that you mentioned Hayesland earlier and my partner Carson. Um, we've, we've been writing some songs that, that I think are a little bit more relevant to what I face on a daily basis right now and what, I, what I'm wanting to explore in the world and in social commentary. Um, so I think very much these songs are a reflection of a moment in my life and a moment that um, that tell that yeah that tells a story and and that I feel can impact and and hopefully inspire others to to tell some of their stories. So uh, I appreciate you being so candid. Uh, I, I'm I'm a lyrics guy, I guess, for lack of a better way awesome. of saying that. Um, so maybe you passed the test, and if we had a another hour or you were paying for the phone call we might go on at length but i'm calling a oh. toronto number how dare you um so you've immersed yourself in hamilton but recently you've made national news in canadian musician magazine for experiences you've had in hamilton uh i have my own thoughts it's more about pay to play um but yeah being a musician in 2016 
getting an audience, playing to an audience, getting new fans, becoming, I mean, for lack of a better word, famous. I mean, if people don't know who the heck you are, then nobody's going to go to the show. So <laughs> you, you need some sort of fame or people have to know who Piper Hayes is. So what's been the last year or two in Hamilton like? Uh, how have you immersed yourself? What's the club scene been like? Uh, how have you made yourself known in Hamilton, Piper Hayes? Well, there's been a there's been a few different things. Um, as you mentioned, the EP releases at the Saint Hollywood, and I've had honestly nothing but good experiences with the um, with Lou and and the bookers there, and and how they how they run their nights and how they treat musicians, and just how they're they've got a regular following of people that come out to shows, and it's it's actually been a really refreshing experience to to work with such collaborative people and um i carson and i also started in january we started doing something called the monthly sound where we hosted either at um, my house in hamilton or the farm we hosted a monthly community-based music night where i would invite a guest we had people like beth moore or janice jolie um come out and and then Carson and I would play and they would play and we would invite people to bring food to roast on the fire. One weekend um, with Janice, actually, we had a plant walk as well on the farm. And so that's been one way that that we've been looking to invite people into our lives and vice versa and and really generate community. I'm a really big fan of, of communities of people. I think it's what will start to change the demographics of the way we live and um and then we've been teaching this weekly music class that the adult community support and that's become another community for us that i very much feel a part of and um in friendship with and and then and then to be honest in a way i feel like i haven't actually been in hamilton that much this past year we've been on tour a lot of this year and doing a lot of stuff away from home so I'm really looking forward to setting a few more routes here in hopefully this coming year and this coming winter and exploring a lot more of the sites and the people and the places and uh, there's a lot of really cool things happening here so it's, it's something to look forward to well again Piper Hayes is quoted in uh, Canadian Musician Magazine from July of this year. I think my tipping point just became I need money because this is my income now and I need to value myself. You had mentioned part of your spiritual, emotional, uh, musical growth was about finding or, or making sure that you valued yourself. And you didn't have a good experience at a club in Hamilton. It wasn't actually a club in Hamilton. Oh. It was. I, I actually have had pretty good experiences of Hamilton places. Um, it was clubs in Toronto and Vancouver, more specifically, that uh, there's a lot of pay-to-play, and there's a lot of venues who ask for you to pay for their sound person, their door person, um, sometimes pay with a portion of your door money, um, or they'll just take a cut of it, and... At the end of the day, I don't necessarily think that's the best business model even for them. I've worked in the hospitality industry for 15 years, I guess, now almost, or just under that. And so I, you know, I understand some of those dynamics. I, I think we're in, a, we're in a challenging time. Things are expensive, and there's, there's a lot of um, lack of the spreading of the wealth, if you will. And... And so I understand that it, that it needs to be a collaboration with venues. I really like that concept, but I don't find when I approach venues, they treat me as a collaborative entity. I find that that musicians are more often exploited than anything else. And at, and at a certain point, that needs to change. We need to start saying, no, I will I will collaborate you, I will do my job, but there also needs to be a reciprocation of work and, and value. I mean, there's nothing worse than arriving at a venue and, and nobody even acknowledges that, that you're there. And you think, 
well, we're still human. We like, can we not have have a human interaction? Well, yes, I won't. Uh, I mean, I guess in the court of law, as an unbiased journalist, I guess. I've just been to tons of shows where a band was playing to virtually me and the bartender and two other people. So, yes, it's a, a fail on both the artist and the venue's space. I mean, if you're thinking locally, then you're renting a hall uh, and right. there are costs to be uh, paid for. It, I mean, yeah, I mean, the band venues can't just book bands. There's a lot of younger bands. There's a lot of stupid musicians who go, yep, I'd love to play on your Friday night. And the, the venue owner goes, okay, they'll bring X amount of people, whatever that is, and nobody comes. So yeah. there, there's nothing made at the door. There's nothing made at the bar. Yeah. And the band had a nice uh, band rehearsal on a fancy yeah. stage with you know a sound man and somebody sitting there waiting to take money, but nobody took money, and a bartender being paid to not serve drinks or comp drinks, you know. So there's there's a myriad of ways of that. Um, yeah, everyone Absolutely. has to do their, their own thing uh, some way. So we are talking with Piper Hayes, Thursday, October 13, at This Ain't Hollywood, with Kitchener Roots folk artist Janice Jolie. So uh, both of you must have incredible draw and We'll bring in 50 or 100 people each, right? That's the plan. <laughs> yep. I've never heard of Janice Jolie, but then I didn't know Piper Hayes until a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've chosen this. Uh, you're a fan of Janice Jolie? Oh, absolutely. I met Janice... I believe it was in March of this year. We were both asked to appear at um, a Workers' Arts Heritage Center event for Women's Day. And it was an event about showcasing women in labor songs and songs specifically written by women about labor. And there was there was a selection of, there's Janice Jolie, there's Mimi Shaw, Sarah Beattie, and myself. And so that's where I met Janice, and she is a powerhouse. She's really awesome, and she's a... She's a poet as well, so her lyrics are pretty powerful and effective, and and the way she works on stage is, is fantastic to watch live. So I'm really looking forward to having her open for me on the 13th, and uh, and we've become friends. We've done a couple shows together since and, and developed our own community between each other and, and our own two music communities. Right, Kitchener-based roots folk artist Janice Jolie opening up for the person we're speaking with, Piper Hayes, Thursday, October 13, the same Hollywood early show. Uh, doors are at 8, Janice Jolie will be on at 8.30, Piper Hayes taking the stage at 9. Tickets are $10 in advance, pipersings.com, the website. So I haven't had the honor of watching you perform. What can we expect from Piper Hayes' concert? How... Is this big release party for the new uh, collection of songs, Goodbye, Mr. Nice Guy? What, what are you going to be doing for this show in particular, Piper? Well, I always like to invite the audience to come experience music with me, however however they enjoy music. So I like to say you can, you can come dance, you can come stand on a chair, you can come have a nap, you can have a conversation. I really believe that we all have different ways of, of interpreting music in our bodies, and some, some of us feel moved to move, some of us feel moved to sing, and I really enjoy when people join me in, in that way. There definitely will be some singers in the audience I know already, and, and they'll, be, they'll be my backup from, from the stage, and um, I think people can expect to meet some really nice people. I've noticed at my shows people often come and they have a new friend by the end of the night. And that's something that I really love and, and think is hopefully will be an extension of the community that I'm that I'm attempting to build and um and they can expect to just have a good time and, and, and feel comfortable in their surroundings. And um so yeah, I, I think it would be nice to see everybody that, that wants to feel a part of something come out. <laughs> Rick Taylor likes making new friends. 
Excellent. Rick Taylor should come out. Well, what kind of new friends is Rick Taylor going to make? I think he's going to make nice, nice friends, people who are thoughtful, people who um, want to want to see progress and, and change and forward thinking take take a bigger role in, on this planet. Um, people who want to sing along and dance along and, and, and laugh and, and, and enjoy each other's company. Again, Thursday night, this ain't Hollywood, all that and more for Piper Hayes' release of Goodbye, Mr. Nice Guy. Are you going to have a full band in tow? It'll be me and Carson up there, so it'll be harmonies, and uh, we always keep a beat when we when we perform, and, and I think I can safely say that we pretty much get people singing along at every show we do, so it'll it'll be a full band with the audience. And and the future for Piper Hayes, you're going to be, I mean, the video for Honeys in Scotland, you mentioned international tours, you still have uh, connections, if not roots, in New York City, so you're going to be uh, traveling the world with a home base from Hamilton now? Yes, that's the plan. Ah, so I said it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, I think I've gotten all I needed. Uh, Thursday, October 13, This Ain't Hollywood, Piper Hayes releases Goodbye, Mr. Nice Guy, PiperSings.com for more details. It was a pleasure uh, learning about you and your music, Piper, and hopefully you'll keep me abreast of what's going on in the future. Absolutely. It was, it was my pleasure to, to chat with you, and, and I hope to see you in person soon. Absolutely. You take care now, Piper. Thanks a lot. Oh. Okay, thanks, Rick. Bye-bye. Piper Hayes, live at This Ain't Hollywood Thursday night, and here's another song from the new EP. You're, you're gone. This is 93.3 CFMU. Lo-fi on the way, dead tired, carpenters, and more. Maybe Bruce Hodgkies. We'll see. This is Piper Hayes, 93.3 CFMU. You're gone. I don't sleep at night. I don't eat all day. But baby, it's okay. You're gone. Were you ever here? We didn't make it a year I thought Naively You'd be with me Shelter of your arms So warm and so kind I'm afraid to move forth But I've grown I can only move forward Be blessed with the present Leave you behind I've grown I thought you'd grow with me We grow together Till we turn gray already gone and I hope you 
felt all my love That I didn't leave you Feeling not good enough Just what you want CFMU, the music of Piper Hayes, a track called You're Gone from Goodbye, Mr. Guy, nice Guy. You can uh, see that song performed live, Piper Hayes, This Ain't Hollywood, Thursday night. Check out PiperSings.com. 